Have you ever felt stuck? Like your dreams are just out of reach? What if I told you that you have the power to achieve anything you set your mind to? It's true. And today I'm going to show you how. This isn't about some magic trick or get-rich-quick scheme. It's about tapping into the spiritual wisdom that's been around for thousands of years. So get ready, because by the end of this video, you'll have the tools to transform your life and make your wildest dreams come true. Think of your mind like a garden. Your thoughts and beliefs are the seeds you plant in this garden. Just like how a tiny acorn can grow into a mighty oak tree, the beliefs you nurture in your mind can grow into powerful forces that shape your reality. But here's the thing. Many of us are planting seeds of doubt, fear, and limitations without even realizing it. We tell ourselves things like, I'm not good enough, or that's impossible for someone like me. And guess what? Those seeds grow too, and they can choke out the beautiful possibilities that could have flourished in our lives. So, the first step in achieving anything you want is to become aware of the seeds you're planting. Start paying attention to your thoughts. When you catch yourself thinking something negative or limiting, stop and ask yourself, is this really true? Or is this just a belief I've picked up along the way? Often, you'll find that these limiting beliefs aren't facts at all. They're just stories we've been telling ourselves for so long that we've started to believe them. Now, here's where the magic happens. Once you've identified those limiting beliefs, you can start replacing them with empowering ones. Instead of, I'm not good enough, try, I am capable of learning and growing. Instead of, that's impossible, try, I can find a way to make this happen. It might feel silly or uncomfortable at first, like you're lying to yourself. But remember, you're just planting new seeds. With time and nurturing, these new beliefs will grow stronger and start to bear fruit in your life. But it's not enough to just think these new thoughts once or twice. You need to water these seeds regularly. Make it a daily practice to affirm your new, empowering beliefs. Say them out loud, write them down, or even create a vision board that represents these beliefs visually. The more you reinforce these positive thoughts, the stronger they'll become. And here's a little secret. Your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what you vividly imagine. So when you consistently feed it positive, empowering beliefs, it starts to accept them as truth. And when your subconscious mind believes something is possible, it goes to work figuring out how to make it happen. Think about it this way. Have you ever bought a new car and suddenly you start seeing that same model everywhere? It's not that there are suddenly more of those cars on the road. It's just that your mind is now tuned to notice them. The same thing happens when you plant seeds of possibility and success in your mind. You start noticing opportunities that were always there, but that you might have overlooked before. Now, I'm not saying that just believing something will magically make it appear in your life. Action is still important, and we'll talk about that later. But belief is the foundation. It's what gives you the courage to take those actions, to keep going when things get tough, and to see setbacks as temporary obstacles rather than permanent roadblocks. So I challenge you to take some time today to examine your beliefs. What seeds have you been planting in your mental garden? Are they seeds of limitation or seeds of possibility? And if you find some weeds of doubt or fear, don't beat yourself up about it. We all have them. Just acknowledge them, thank them for trying to protect you in their own misguided way, and then gently but firmly replace them with seeds of empowerment and possibility. Remember, you are the gardener of your mind. You have the power to choose what grows there. So choose wisely and watch as your life begins to blossom in ways you never thought possible. Now that we've talked about the power of belief, let's dive into something equally important, connecting with your inner self. You see, achieving your dreams isn't just about positive thinking. It's about aligning with your true purpose, and to do that, you need to get in touch with the deepest part of who you are. Think of your inner self as a wise guide, always there to help you navigate life's journey. The problem is, most of us are so caught up in the noise of everyday life, work, responsibilities, social media, you name it, that we can't hear this inner voice. It's like trying to hear a whisper in a noisy room. To hear it, we need to quiet the noise. This is where practices like meditation and self-reflection come in. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Meditation? That's not for me. I can't sit still for five minutes, 
let alone empty my mind. But here's the thing. Meditation isn't about emptying your mind. It's about becoming aware of your thoughts without getting caught up in them. It's about creating a little space between you and the constant chatter in your head. And it doesn't have to be complicated. Let me share a simple technique you can try right now. It's called the 555 method. Here's how it works. First, find a comfortable place to sit. It can be on a chair, on the floor, wherever feels good to you. Now, close your eyes and take a deep breath. For the next five minutes, just focus on your breath. Feel the air moving in and out of your body. If your mind wanders, and it will, that's normal. Just gently bring your attention back to your breath. After five minutes, spend the next five minutes scanning your body. Start at the top of your head and slowly move down to your toes, noticing any sensations you feel along the way. Maybe you notice tension in your shoulders or a tingling in your fingers. Just observe without trying to change anything. For the final five minutes, ask yourself a simple question. What do I really want? Don't try to force an answer. Just let whatever comes up, come up. It might be something big like, I want to make a difference in the world. Or something simple like, I want to feel more peace in my daily life. Whatever it is, just notice it without judgment. That's it. 15 minutes of your day to connect with your inner self. It might feel awkward or uncomfortable at first, and that's okay. The important thing is to make it a regular practice. Over time, you'll start to notice that you're more in tune with your true desires and motivations. But connecting with your inner self isn't just about meditation. It's also about self-reflection. Take some time each day to check in with yourself. Ask questions like, How am I feeling right now? What's important to me today? What am I grateful for? What's challenging me right now? And what can I learn from it? You might want to keep a journal to write down your thoughts and feelings. This isn't about writing perfect prose. It's just for you. A conversation with yourself. Over time, you'll start to notice patterns. You'll gain insights into what truly matters to you, what energizes you, and what drains you. As you get more in touch with your inner self, you might notice that some of your goals start to shift. Maybe you thought you wanted a high-powered career, but you realize what you really crave is more time with your family. Or maybe you discover a passion you never knew you had. This is all part of the process. Remember, achieving anything in life isn't about forcing yourself to pursue goals that society or others have set for you. It's about aligning with your true purpose and desires. Now, this doesn't mean you'll suddenly have all the answers. Life is a journey of continuous discovery. But by regularly connecting with your inner self, you're developing a powerful tool, an inner compass that can guide you through life's challenges and opportunities. Think of it this way. If your life is a ship sailing across the ocean, your inner self is the compass. Without it, you might drift aimlessly or get blown off course by every wind that comes along. But with a strong connection to your inner self, you can navigate even the stormiest seas, always knowing which direction is true north for you. So I encourage you to make connecting with your inner self a priority. Start with the 555 meditation I shared, or find another method that works for you. The important thing is to create regular time and space for self-reflection and inner listening. As you do, you'll find that achieving your goals becomes not just easier, but more fulfilling. Because you'll be pursuing goals that truly resonate with who you are at your core. Now that we've explored the power of belief and the importance of connecting with your inner self, let's talk about a crucial step in achieving anything you want in life. Setting intentions. You might be thinking, isn't this just a fancy way of saying setting goals? Well, not quite. While goals and intentions are related, they're not the same thing, and understanding the difference can be a game changer in your journey to success. Think of it this way. A goal is like a destination on a map, while an intention is more like the direction you want to travel. Goals are specific and measurable. I want to lose 20 pounds, or I want to make $100,000 this year. These are great, and they have their place. But intentions go deeper. They're about the essence of what you want to create in your life. For example, instead of setting a goal to lose 20 pounds, you might set an intention to nurture and care for your body. Instead of a goal to make $100,000, you might set an intention to create abundance and financial freedom in your life. 
Do you see the difference? Goals focus on the what, while intentions focus on the why and the how. This shift from goals to intentions is powerful for a few reasons. First, it keeps you focused on the big picture. When you're just chasing a number, whether it's a number on the scale or in your bank account, it's easy to lose sight of why that number matters to you. But when you're clear on your intentions, every step you take is meaningful, regardless of the specific outcome. Second, intentions are more flexible than goals. Life has a way of throwing curveballs at us, and sometimes our initial goals might not be possible or might no longer serve us. But intentions can adapt. If your intention is to create more joy in your life, that can guide your actions whether you're thriving in your dream job or facing unexpected challenges. Lastly, intentions align more closely with our inner selves. They're not about meeting external standards or expectations, but about expressing our true desires and values. This makes them more motivating and sustainable in the long run. So, how do you set powerful intentions? Here's a step-by-step -step guide. Get clear on your values. What matters most to you in life? Is it family, creativity, personal growth, making a difference in the world? Your intentions should align with your core values. Connect with your feelings. How do you want to feel in your everyday life? Peaceful? Energized? Fulfilled? Your intentions should help create those feelings. Use positive language. Frame your intentions in positive terms. Instead of, I want to stop being stressed all the time, try, I intend to cultivate peace and calm in my life. Make them present tense. Phrase your intentions as if they're already true. I am open to abundance in all areas of my life is more powerful than, I will be open to abundance. Keep them open-ended. Remember, intentions are about direction, not specific destinations. I intend to grow and learn every day leaves room for unexpected opportunities and paths. Write them down. There's power in putting your intentions on paper. It makes them more real and concrete. Review and revise regularly. As you grow and change, your intentions might shift too. That's okay. Regularly check in with yourself to make sure your intentions still resonate with you. I am open to joy and wonder in my everyday life. I nurture loving and supportive relationships. I trust in my ability to handle whatever life brings my way. I am committed to continuous growth and learning. I create abundance through serving others with my unique gifts. Once you've set your intentions, the key is to keep them alive in your daily life. You might want to start each day by reading your intentions aloud. Or you could create a vision board that represents your intentions visually and place it somewhere you'll see it often. But remember, setting intentions isn't just a one-time thing. It's an ongoing practice of aligning your actions with your deepest desires and values. As you go through your day, ask yourself, is what I'm doing right now in line with my intentions? If not, can you adjust your actions or approach to better align with your intentions? This doesn't mean you'll always make the right choice. We're human, after all. But by regularly checking in with your intentions, you create a sort of internal guidance system. Over time, you'll find yourself naturally making choices that bring you closer to the life you truly want. And here's something really cool. As you live in alignment with your intentions, you'll start to notice synchronicities, those meaningful coincidences that seem to guide you in the right direction. Maybe you set an intention to expand your creativity, and suddenly you keep running into people who are involved in the arts. Or you intend to improve your health, and you unexpectedly come across the perfect fitness class for you. These aren't just random events. They're signs that you're in flow with your true path. Setting and living by your intentions is like planting seeds in the garden of your life. You might not see results immediately, but with consistent nurturing, that is, with thoughts and actions that align with your intentions, those seeds will grow into beautiful realities. So take some time today to set your intentions. What kind of life do you truly want to create? How do you want to show up in the world? What values do you want to embody? Let your answers to these questions guide you in setting powerful, heartfelt intentions. And then watch as the universe conspires to help you bring those intentions to life. Remember, achieving anything you want in life isn't about forcing outcomes or controlling every detail. It's about setting clear intentions, aligning your actions with those intentions, 
and then staying open to the magic and opportunities that life brings your way. When you approach life this way, you'll find that your journey becomes not just about reaching a destination, but about growing, learning, and evolving into the best version of yourself along the way. Fear. It's a small word, but it can have a big impact on our lives. Fear can stop us from pursuing our dreams, trying new things, or even just being ourselves. But here's the thing about fear. It's not always bad. Fear is a natural part of life, and sometimes it keeps us safe. The problem is when fear starts controlling our lives, when it becomes the main driver of our decisions. So, how do we deal with fear in a way that doesn't hold us back from achieving our dreams? The first step is to understand that fear is just a feeling, not a fact. Just because we're afraid of something doesn't mean it's actually dangerous or bad for us. Often, the things we fear the most are the very things that can lead to our greatest growth and happiness. Think about it this way. Imagine you're standing at the edge of a swimming pool. You want to jump in, but you're afraid. The water looks cold, and you're not sure how deep it is. But once you gather your courage and take the plunge, you realize it's not so bad after all. In fact, it feels great. The water's refreshing, and you're having fun. This is often how life works. The things we fear often turn out to be not nearly as bad as we imagined, and sometimes they're even better than we hoped. Acknowledge your fear. Don't try to push it away or pretend it's not there. Say to yourself, I notice that I'm feeling afraid right now. Get curious about it. Ask yourself, what exactly am I afraid of? What's the worst that could happen? Challenge your thoughts. Are your fears realistic? Are you jumping to conclusions or assuming the worst? Reframe the situation. Instead of seeing it as a threat, can you view it as an opportunity for growth or learning? Take a small step. You don't have to conquer your fear all at once. What's one tiny step you can take in the direction of your goal? Remember, the goal isn't to never feel fear. The goal is to feel the fear and do it anyway. Each time you face a fear, you grow stronger and more confident. You prove to yourself that you're capable of handling challenges. Another powerful way to let go of fear is through visualization. Close your eyes and imagine yourself succeeding at the thing you're afraid of. See yourself handling challenges with ease and grace. Feel the sense of accomplishment and joy that comes with overcoming your fear. The more vividly you can imagine this, the more confident you'll feel when you face the real situation. Lastly, remember that it's okay to ask for help. Sometimes, talking to a friend, a mentor, or a professional can give us the support and perspective we need to face our fears. There's no shame in needing support. In fact, reaching out for help is a sign of strength, not weakness. As you practice letting go of fear, you'll find that your world starts to expand. Things that once seemed impossible start to feel achievable. You'll be more willing to take risks, try new things, and step out of your comfort zone. And that's where the magic happens. That's where you start achieving things you never thought possible. Now, let's talk about something you might have heard of before, the law of attraction. Simply put, this principle suggests that we attract into our lives whatever we focus on. It's the idea that our thoughts and feelings have a direct impact on our experiences in life. Now, I know what you might be thinking. So, if I just think about being rich, I'll become rich? Well, not exactly. The law of attraction isn't about magical thinking or wishful daydreaming. It's about aligning your thoughts, feelings, and actions with your desires in a way that opens you up to opportunities and motivates you to take action. Think of it like tuning a radio. When you want to listen to a particular station, you have to tune into the right frequency. In the same way, when you want to attract certain experiences or opportunities into your life, you need to tune your thoughts and energy to the right frequency. Get clear on what you want. The universe can't deliver if you're sending mixed signals. Take some time to really think about what you want in different areas of your life. Career, relationships, personal growth, etc. Visualize it. Spend time each day visualizing your desires as if they've already come true. Use all your senses. What does it look, feel, sound, smell, and taste like to have achieved your goals? Feel the feelings. It's not enough to just think about what you want. You need to feel the emotions associated with having it. If your goal is to have a loving relationship, for example, 
feel the joy, warmth, and connection that would bring. Act as if, behave as if you've already achieved your goal. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, start adopting the habits and mindset of successful entrepreneurs now. Be open to opportunities. Sometimes the path to our goals doesn't look like we expected. Stay open to unexpected opportunities and be willing to take inspired action when it feels right. Practice gratitude. Appreciate what you already have. Gratitude puts you in a positive state of mind that attracts more good things into your life. Let go of the how. Trust that the universe will bring your desires to you in the right way and at the right time. Your job is to stay focused on the what and the why. Now, here's an important point. The law of attraction isn't about sitting on your couch and waiting for good things to magically appear. It's about aligning your energy with your desires in a way that inspires you to take action. When you're in alignment, you'll feel motivated and energized to pursue your goals. You'll start noticing opportunities that you might have missed before. For example, let's say you want to start your own business. As you focus on this desire and visualize yourself as a successful entrepreneur, you might suddenly notice a relevant workshop being offered in your area. Or you might strike up a conversation with someone at a party who turns out to be looking for exactly the kind of service you want to offer. These aren't coincidences. They're the result of you being tuned in to the frequency of your desires. It's also important to understand that the law of attraction works with your subconscious beliefs. If you consciously want success but subconsciously believe you're not worthy of it, you might find yourself sabotaging your efforts. This is why the work we did earlier on examining and changing our beliefs is so important. Lastly, remember that the law of attraction isn't about controlling every detail of your life. It's about setting a clear intention, aligning your energy with that intention, and then staying open to how it unfolds. Sometimes, the universe has even better plans for us than we could have imagined. So, Start practicing the law of attraction in your daily life. Set aside time each day to visualize your goals, feel the associated emotions, and take inspired action. Pay attention to the opportunities that come your way, and don't be afraid to say yes to new experiences. As you do this consistently, you'll start to see positive changes in your life, bringing you closer to achieving anything you want. We've talked about the power of belief, connecting with your inner self, setting intentions, letting go of fear, and the law of attraction. Now it's time to discuss a crucial element in achieving anything you want in life, taking inspired action. You see, all the positive thinking and visualizing in the world won't get you anywhere if you don't actually do something. But here's the key. It's not about forcing yourself to take action out of fear or obligation. It's about taking inspired action, action that feels right and aligned with your goals and values. So, what exactly is inspired action? It's action that comes from a place of excitement, enthusiasm, and alignment, rather than from fear, pressure, or should. It's when you feel a strong inner pull to do something, even if it doesn't always make logical sense. Here's an example. Let's say you want to start a business. Forced action might look like forcing yourself to work on a business plan for hours every day, even when you're feeling drained and uninspired. Inspired action on the other hand, might be following a sudden urge to attend a networking event where you end up meeting the perfect business partner. The key to taking inspired action is to trust your intuition. Your intuition is like a GPS for your life, always trying to guide you in the right direction. But just like a GPS, you need to learn how to listen to it and trust its directions. Pay attention to your body. Often, our bodies give us signals about what feels right or wrong. You might feel a sense of excitement or lightness when something is right, or a heaviness or tension when something's off. Notice recurring thoughts or ideas. If you keep thinking about doing something, even if it seems random, it might be your intuition trying to guide you. Be aware of synchronicities. Those meaningful coincidences we talked about earlier, they're often signs that you're on the right track. Listen to your gut reactions. Your first instinct about a situation is often your intuition speaking. Pay attention to your energy levels. Inspired actions often give you energy, while actions that aren't aligned tend to drain you. Now, this doesn't mean you should only do things when you feel like it. Sometimes, inspired action means pushing through resistance to do something you know is important. The key is to distinguish between productive discomfort 
the kind that leads to growth and true misalignment. Set aside some quiet time each morning to tune into yourself. This could be through meditation, journaling, or just sitting quietly with your thoughts. Ask yourself, what's one thing I feel inspired to do today that will move me closer to my goals? Write down whatever comes to mind, even if it seems small or unrelated. Commit to taking that action during the day. At the end of the day, reflect on how it felt to take that action and what results came from it. As you practice this, you'll start to trust your intuition more and more. You'll find yourself naturally taking actions that are aligned with your goals and values. Remember, inspired action doesn't always mean big, dramatic moves. Sometimes it's as simple as sending an email, making a phone call, or having a conversation with someone. The key is that it feels right to you. Also, don't worry if you don't always know the final destination. Often, inspired action is about taking the next step, even if you can't see the whole staircase. Trust that as you take each step, the next one will be revealed. Lastly, remember that taking inspired action also means being willing to adjust your course as you go. If something isn't working, or if you get new information, be willing to change direction. This isn't giving up. It's being flexible and responsive to what life is showing you. As you start taking more inspired action, you'll likely find that achieving your goals becomes easier and more enjoyable. You'll be in flow, moving with the current of life rather than constantly swimming upstream. And that's when you'll start seeing real progress towards achieving anything you want in life. So, what inspired action are you feeling called to take today? Trust that impulse, take that step, and watch as your dreams start becoming reality. Now, let's talk about a practice that can truly transform your life. Gratitude. You might be thinking, how can being thankful help me achieve my goals? Well, Gratitude is like a magic key that unlocks the door to abundance in all areas of your life. When we practice gratitude, we shift our focus from what we lack to what we have. This simple shift can completely change our perspective and, as a result, our experience of life. It's like putting on a pair of glasses that suddenly allows you to see all the good things around you that you might have been overlooking. But gratitude isn't just about feeling good. It actually changes our brain chemistry. When we express gratitude, our brain releases dopamine and serotonin, two crucial neurotransmitters responsible for our emotions. They enhance our mood immediately, making us feel happy from the inside out. So how can you start cultivating more gratitude in your life? Here's a simple daily practice you can try. Every morning when you wake up, before you even get out of bed, think of three things you're grateful for. They can be big things like your health or your family, or small things like the comfortable bed you slept in or the cup of coffee you're about to enjoy. Throughout the day, try to catch yourself when you're complaining or focusing on what's wrong. Pause and see if you can find something to be grateful for in that situation. Even in challenges, there are often hidden gifts or opportunities for growth. Before you go to sleep at night, reflect on your day and identify three good things that happened. They don't have to be big events. Maybe you saw a beautiful sunset had a nice conversation with a friend, or enjoyed a delicious meal. Keep a gratitude journal. Writing down what you're grateful for makes it more concrete and reinforces the positive feelings associated with gratitude. Express your gratitude to others. When someone does something you appreciate, let them know. Not only does this strengthen your relationships, but it also amplifies your own feelings of gratitude. As you practice gratitude regularly, you'll start to notice some amazing changes. First, you'll find yourself feeling happier and more content on a daily basis. But beyond that, you'll start to attract more positive experiences into your life. This is because what we focus on expands. When we focus on the good things in our lives, we tend to notice and create more good things. Gratitude also helps us maintain perspective when we face challenges. It reminds us that even when things are tough, there's still good in our lives. This resilience is crucial for achieving our goals as it helps us bounce back from setbacks and keep moving forward. Moreover, gratitude can actually help us manifest our desires faster. When we're grateful for what we have, we put ourselves in a state of abundance rather than lack. This abundant mindset opens us up to receiving more good things in our lives. Remember, gratitude isn't about ignoring problems or pretending everything is perfect. 
It's about choosing to focus on the good while still acknowledging and working through challenges. It's about finding the silver lining, the lesson, or the opportunity in every situation. So start your gratitude practice today. You might be amazed at how this simple habit can transform your life and accelerate your journey towards achieving anything you want. Life isn't always smooth sailing. No matter how positive our mindset or how clear our intentions, we're bound to face obstacles along the way. But here's a secret that successful people know. Obstacles aren't roadblocks, they're opportunities in disguise. When we encounter an obstacle, our first reaction is often frustration or disappointment. We might feel like giving up or think that it's a sign we're on the wrong path. But what if we could shift our perspective? What if we could see obstacles not as problems, but as chances to grow, learn, and become stronger? See challenges as teachers. Every obstacle has something to teach us. Maybe it's teaching us patience, resilience, creativity, or showing us where we need to improve our skills. Ask empowering questions instead of, why is this happening to me? Ask, what can I learn from this? Or, how can I use this to become stronger? Look for the opportunity. In every challenge, there's an opportunity hidden somewhere. Train yourself to look for it. Remember past successes. Remind yourself of times you've overcome obstacles in the past. This builds confidence in your ability to handle whatever comes your way. Break it down. Big obstacles can feel overwhelming. Break them down into smaller, manageable steps. Seek support. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Sometimes, a fresh perspective can help us see solutions we missed. Practice self-compassion. Be kind to yourself when facing challenges. Treat yourself with the same kindness you'd offer a good friend. Let me share a personal story about overcoming obstacles. A few years ago, I was working on a big project that I was really excited about. I had put months of work into it, and it was finally coming together. Then, just weeks before the launch, a major setback hit. A key partner pulled out, leaving a huge gap in our plans. At first, I was devastated. I thought about giving up on the whole project. But after taking some time to process my feelings, I decided to look at this setback differently. I asked myself, what opportunity could be hiding in this challenge? As I brainstormed solutions, I realized that this setback was forcing me to think more creatively. I reached out to my network and ended up connecting with a new partner who brought fresh ideas and resources to the project. In the end, the project turned out even better than I had originally planned. This experience taught me that obstacles often push us to grow in ways we wouldn't have otherwise. They force us to think outside the box, to dig deep and find strength we didn't know we had. So the next time you face an obstacle, try to pause before reacting. Take a deep breath and remind yourself that this challenge is an opportunity in disguise. Ask yourself what you can learn from it and how you can use it to become stronger or more skilled. Remember, every successful person has faced obstacles. What sets them apart isn't that they don't have challenges, it's how they respond to those challenges. They see obstacles as stepping stones rather than stumbling blocks. As you practice this mindset, you'll find that you become more resilient and adaptable. You'll start to approach challenges with curiosity rather than fear. And most importantly, you'll keep moving forward towards your goals, no matter what obstacles arise. We've covered a lot of ground on this journey to achieving anything you want in life. We've explored the power of belief and how our thoughts shape our reality. We've learned about connecting with our inner selves and setting powerful intentions. We've discussed how to let go of fear, harness the law of attraction, take inspired action, practice gratitude, and overcome obstacles. But remember, this isn't just about reaching a destination. It's about who you become along the way. As you apply these principles in your life, you'll find yourself growing, evolving, and transforming. You'll become more confident, more resilient, more in tune with your true self. The journey to achieving your dreams isn't always easy. There will be ups and downs, challenges, and triumphs. But with the tools and mindset we've discussed, you're well-equipped to handle whatever comes your way. Be patient with yourself. Change takes time, and growth isn't always linear. Trust the process and keep moving forward, even if progress seems slow at times. Celebrate your wins, no matter how small. 
Every step forward is progress and deserves acknowledgement. Stay curious and keep learning. The principles we've discussed are just the beginning. There's always more to discover about yourself and the world around you. Be flexible. Sometimes, the path to our goals looks different than we expected. Stay open to new opportunities and be willing to adjust your course as needed. Keep your why in mind. When things get tough, remind yourself why your goals are important to you. This can provide the motivation to keep going. Practice self-compassion. Be kind to yourself along the way. Treat yourself with the same kindness and understanding you'd offer a good friend. Enjoy the journey. While it's great to have goals, don't forget to enjoy the present moment. Find joy in the process of growth and transformation. Remember, you have everything you need within you to achieve your dreams. You are capable of more than you can imagine. Trust in yourself, believe in your potential, and keep taking steps forward, no matter how small. As you go forth from here, I encourage you to start applying these principles in your life. Begin with small steps, maybe start a daily gratitude practice, or spend a few minutes each day visualizing your goals. Pay attention to your thoughts and start replacing limiting beliefs with empowering ones. Take inspired action, even if it's just one small step each day. And most importantly, believe in yourself. Believe that you are worthy of your dreams, that you are capable of achieving them, and that the universe is conspiring in your favor. Because when you truly believe in yourself and your potential, there's nothing you can't achieve. So go out there and start creating the life of your dreams. You've got this.